It is Friday, February 15th, and you're watching Right on Cue College Sports. What is up? What is up? Welcome in. Thanks for checking us out again. You are watching right on Q College Sports. I'm your host, Tyson Quiller. And uh, remember, don't forget to like, subscribe. Please feel free to share this content with anybody that you think might enjoy it. We are now officially in that wide, expansive space between the end of college basketball season and the start of college football season. Those of you who watch this program regularly know those are our two primary focuses. But we will continue to bring you college uh college athletics content throughout this period of time. I am scouring the landscape of college sports, and we're going to be covering the uh, recap of the Frozen Four College Hockey National Championships with Brad Quiller here in a couple of weeks. We are going to be doing probably a preview and a recap of the College Baseball World Series. We're also going to be covering the uh, Outdoor NCAA Track and Field Championships later on uh, here in a couple of weeks. But today, Today's a big boy day. Today, we are talking about the 2022 Wrestling National Championship Tournament. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I did wrestle in high school. May have been good enough, maybe, to, to get a little bit of action in college. Certainly not at Division One level, but obviously I chose to uh, pursue track and field at the University of New Mexico instead of that. A uh, little guy. I was a little guy. Freshman year, 103. Then sophomore year, 112. Junior year, 119. Senior year, I was 125 pounds. Yep. And there I am right there. <laughs> Anyways, let's kick this thing off with our first weight class. This is lightweight at the NCAA Division I level. 125 pounds. And a local kid, Northern Colorado sophomore Jace Colzer, qualified for the NCAA Championship Tournament at this weight as the 30 seed. He lost 16 to 2 by major decision in the uh, to the three seed in the first round. He then defeated the 33 seed Patrick McCormack from Virginia in the Wrestlebacks, one to nothing before losing again to the 19 seed Joey Prada of Oklahoma, four to one. A big congratulations to Jace! What an accomplishment! Congratulations on qualifying for the big show. Now this bracket was pretty chalky. The one, the two, the three, and the four seeds all made the semifinals. Now, Brandon Courtney lost in the NCAA Finals last season to Spencer Lee from Iowa uh, and was looking to make it all the way again this year. But that was halted in the semis. Michigan graduate student Nick Suriano defeated the four seed Courtney 4-1 to one in a defensive battle, really, to advance to the championship match. In the other semifinal, the two-seed Vito Arujao of Cornell was upset by the three-seed Patrick Glory from Princeton. Uh, Glory completely barnstormed Arujao from the jump, finishing him off 13-5 by major decision. That set up the NCAA final of Patrick Glory from Princeton against the grad student Nick Suriano from Michigan. Suriano pulled off the 5-3 decision and is now your 125-pound NCAA champion, finishing off a perfect season, 21-0. and You know what? I'm so happy for this kid. Uh, he was seemingly a lock for the U.S. Olympic team uh, last year, and then uh, kind of out of nowhere, he tested positive for COVID, completely asymptomatic, uh, and was unable to compete. Had that opportunity completely stolen from him. So for him to remain strong, to keep his head on right, and to come back and win this national championship, congratulations, Nick Suriano. Michigan, you got a good one there. Next, at the 133-pound weight class, after sitting out all of last season due to an injury, Air Force Academy senior Sidney Flores qualified for the NCAA championship tournament at this weight class. 18 and 14 on the season, he earned a 28 seed and lost his first match uh, as well to the five seed Austin DeSanto from Iowa by technical faults, 19 to three. He too won his first match in the Wrestleback though, 12 to nine over Cody Russell from Appalachian State. But the dream season came to an end in the second round of the Wrestleback as he lost nine to two to the 11 seed from Oregon State, Devin Turner. Sidney Flores, the senior, first of all, thank you for your service, but second of all, congratulations. What a major accomplishment. Colorado is represented very well at this NCAA championship tournament. Elsewhere in the bracket, 
this one, this one also went, went very chalky as well. The one seed and reigning champion Roman Bravo Young from Penn State defeated the five seed and Flores' first opponent, Austin DeSanto, 3-2 in the first semi. In the other semifinal, the two seed Dayton Fix from Oklahoma State knocked off Michael McGee from Arizona State 5-1, setting up a rematch of the very same two competitors from last year's NCAA final. Bravo Young knocked off Fix last year 4-2. Uh, with the C's flip this year in the rematch, it was a clash of true champions, but ultimately Penn State's Bro Roman Bravo Young held on for the 3-2 victory and doubled up his championship crowns. Now at the 141-pound weight class, this weight class was anything but chalk, at least on the bottom half of the bracket for sure. Kizan Clark from North Carolina was this tournament's true Cinderella. Uh, he was seeded 15 and had to defeat the 18 seed in the first round and the two seed and last year's NCAA Finals runner-up, Jaden Ellerman from Iowa, uh, in the second round. Then the ten seed and the six seed to make the NCAA Finals, and he did it like a boss. In the finals, though, I think he just ran out of gas. He was rolled up by the reigning champion from last year, Nick Lee, from Penn State as well, 10-3. He finished the season perfect, 27-0. This dude, Nick Lee, is a four-time All-American and now a two-time NCAA champion. You will likely see him in the Olympics coming up soon, if not for two losses in his entire college career, both of them his freshman and sophomore year in the NCAA championship match. He, we'd be looking at an undefeated four-time NCAA champion right here. So keep your eyes out for Nick Lee. Then at our 149-pound weight class, Ohio State Sammy Sasso was the one seed last year and lost in the finals 3-2 to two to the two seed Austin O'Connor, but he came back to try and avenge that loss this year. But after carving his way to the semifinals, he was knocked off by this year's number one seed, undefeated junior Yanni Diacomahalas from Cornell 6-3. to three. On the other side of the bracket, the 10 seed Ridge Lovett from Nebraska upset the 7 seed and then pinned the 2 seed Tariq Wilson from NC State on his way to the semifinals while the 11 seed Bryce Andonian from Virginia Tech knocked off the 6 seed and then pinned the 3 seed Austin Gomez from Wisconsin to earn his way to the semis. Nebraska's Love It then defeated Andonian in the semis in a back and forth 5 to 4 decision. Yanni Diakomahalas was a, really pretty much a whirlwind in this tournament and really all season long. He capped off a perfect season as well, going 33-0 with a big 11-5 decision in the NCAA Final over Nebraska's Love It. Now at our 157-pound weight class, what's that I see? We got a Wyoming sighting here. The Wyoming senior Jacob Wright qualified for his second straight NCAA tournament, this time as a two-seed. He defeated Michigan State's Chase Saldat 6-1 in the first round before dropping his second match 3-2 to Princeton's Quincy Monday, the five seed. Wright then lost his first match of the Wrestleback 4-2 to Austin O'Connor, who moved up a weight class after winning last year's 149 NCAA title, and that would put an end to Jacob Wright's season. Same thing, man. Congratulations, Jacob Wright, on an incredible season. Congratulations on making the big show. Uh, I know you probably bowed out a little bit before you were hoping to, but it's still an incredible accomplishment. Good for you. Elsewhere in that bracket, though, the top half of the bracket was busted wide open when the number one seed, David Carr, was bounced out by the 17 seed, Oregon State's Hunter Willis, in just the second round. Michigan's Will Lewan, the eight seed, saw the opening, and he attacked marching into the semifinals to face the five-seed Quincy Monday. In the semifinals, Monday squeaked past Lawan 3-2 and advanced to the finals. On the bottom half of the bracket, the one-seed from last year's tournament, Ryan Deacon from Northwestern, faced off with Arizona State's Ja'Cory Teamer, the three-seed in the semifinals. Teamer had a great season going 25-4, but Deacon was on a mission and won by a major decision 10-2. Princeton's Monday had a brilliant run to the finals, but Ryan Deacon controlled every aspect of this match, really, and secured the national title 9-2, capping off a perfect season for him as well, 23-0. Next, at the 165-pound weight class. This one was really dominated all season long by two men, the Wisconsin transfer and two-time All-American Evan Wick, 
from Cal Poly, who entered the tournament 22 and 1 on the year, and Missouri's sophomore stud Keegan O'Toole, who entered the tournament undefeated 25 and 0. Both marched their way into the semifinals relatively easily, but in totally different styles. In the semis, Wick was defeated by the eight seed from Stanford, Shane Griffith, seven to six, while O'Toole remained dominant, taking out Michigan's Cameron Amin, four to zero. Check this out: O'Toole didn't give up a single point on his way to the finals, but Griffith was a taller task than his seed would indicate, and he had a fantastic tournament. Ultimately, though, O'Toole got the victory, six to five, to claim his first national title. At 174 pounds, we have Wyoming again. The senior Hayden Hastings qualified for the fourth season in a row for the NCAA tournament. This time, he was a 20 seed. He was knocked off by the 13 seed Matt Feinsilver from Duke 5-3 in the first round. He then strung together quite a run in the wrestleback, winning three straight, two by major decision and one by way of pin. He then lost in the fourth round of the Wrestleback to Nebraska's Mikey Libriola, 5-3, and that put an end to his season. Congratulations, Hayden. What a fantastic season you had. Congratulations, and uh, congratulations on a fantastic career. It sounds like he's probably uh, done with the collegiate level. As for the rest of the field at the 174-pound weight class, Reigning national champion Carter Starocci was back to defend his title as the number one seed and easily coasted his way into the semi, where he dominated the four seed Hayden Hidalay from North Carolina State 10 to three on his way to back to back finals, uh, back to the finals for the second consecutive year. On the bottom half of the bracket, Michigan's Logan Mazza was dominant. On his trek to the semis, he also defeated every opponent by at least five points. In the semis, he met the two-seed Makai Lewis from Virginia Tech and had the lead before getting caught and pinned at 6 minutes 19 seconds into the bout. Lewis then wrestled the match of his life in the finals, tying the giant Carter Starocci from Penn State, but ultimately Starocci got the win on ride time. Both of these guys had a phenomenal tournament. Starochi is just a sophomore now and has two championships. He could be a four-chip kind of guy with an Olympic future for himself as well. At 184 pounds, more Wyoming. Wyoming big boys. The senior Tate Samuelson qualified for his fourth season in a row for the NCAA championship tournament at this weight, this time as a 21 seed. In his first match, he upset the 12 seed, Britt Wilson from Northern Illinois, 9-3, before getting beat by the 5 seed, Bernie Troux from Cal Poly, 6-2. Samuelson then lost his first match of the Wrestleback to the 27 seed Keegan Moore from Oklahoma, and that would bring his season to a close. Mr. Samuelson, congratulations on a fantastic season and an outstanding wrestling career up there in Laramie. Elsewhere in the 184-pound weight class, now this weight class really was dominated by two big men all season as well. Miles Amin from Michigan, who dropped down a weight class this year, grabbed the one seed after defeating Aaron Brooks in the Big Ten Championships. Brooks from Penn State is the reigning national champion and was viewed as the best all year, really with this only one loss uh, being the, the one to Amin in the Big Ten Championships. Brooks and Amin both blew out their first three opponents arriving in the semifinals easily. Amin faced Bernie Trokes from Cal Poly, who barely got out of the first round 1-0, but really kicked it into gear thereafter. He gave Amin all he could handle, but couldn't secure one last takedown as time expired, losing 3-1. As for Brooks, he outlasted Trent Hidley from North Carolina State 6-4 to, to set up the rematch in the final. Aaron Brooks showed his experience opening a quick 4-0 lead and holding off Amin to secure his second consecutive NCAA championship and avenge his loss to Amin in the Big Ten Championship. Then, at the 197-pound weight class, this field had two local guys of note competing in it. First, Northern Colorado senior Alan Coltier qualified for the NCAA championship tournament as the 27 seed. He lost his first match to the sixth seed, Jacob Werner from Iowa, 8-0, and then was pinned in his first match in the Wrestleback by the 22 seed Owen Pence from South Dakota State. Wyoming junior Stephen Buchanan 
also qualified for the tournament and received the two seed. He squeaked out a 2-0 victory in the first round to advance, but then got on a flat-out roll. He took out the 18 seed and the 7 seed before running into Colthier's first opponent, Werner, from Iowa and falling 6-4 in the quarterfinals. In the wrestleback, Buchanan defeated the 10 seed from Iowa State and knocked off the 7 seed Rocky Elam from, Michigan, er, from Missouri again to secure the third place finish. Congratulations to Allen from University of Northern Colorado on a fantastic season and very much congratulations to Stephen Buchanan, a third place finish at NCAAs. What an incredible accomplishment. Very much congratulations. As for the remainder of the field, the real surprise of the bracket was Ohio State's Gavin Hoffman. He drew the 21 seed and defeated the 12 seed, the 5 seed, and the 13 seed on his way into the semifinals. However, he then ran into Max Dean from Penn State, who was a two-time All-American and was the national runner-up uh, before redshirting last year. Dean, who was 26-1 on the season, put an end to Hoffman's magical run, 9-3. to the six seed and Big Ten runner-up Jacob Werner from Iowa knocked off the three seed Eric Schultz to advance to the semis before defeating Buchanan from Wyoming in the semifinals. This set up a rematch from the Big Ten championships as well, and Max Dean won three to two to claim his first NCAA championship. Now, how about the big boys? Heavyweight, 285 pounds. Air Force sophomore Wyatt Hendrickson qualified for the second season in a row for the NCAA championship tournament, this time as a five seed. He pinned his first opponent, Michael McAlevey, from the Citadel and then was upset in the second round by the 12 seed, Christian Lance from Nebraska, five to four. Hendrickson then won his first match in the Wrestleback, 13 to one, and then lost to the 13 seed, Tate Ornoff from Ohio State, nine to five. That put an end to the Air Force Falcon, Wyatt Hendrickson. First of all, thank you for your service, Mr. Hendrickson, but also, what a fantastic season. You got two seasons in the rear view, two more to come. Keep it going, my man. You're really making everyone proud out here. Now, the bigger picture of the 285 weight class. So this one was pretty clear from the outset. Minnesota heavyweight and Olympic gold medalist Gable Steveson pretty much versed the world. Stevenson had lost only twice in his collegiate career coming into the tournament, and it stayed that way as he cruised to his second NCAA championship. Watch out for this kid, Colton Schultz, from Arizona State, though. He made it all the way to the NCAA Finals and finished the season with a 26-2 record. He is just a freshman. Between him and the Penn State big man, Greg Kirkvilliot, who made the semis as a sophomore, the future is bright for this heavyweight wrestling division. Now, it was a pretty cool moment at the end of this one. Steveson left his shoes on the mat, signaling his retirement from wrestling. Truly, truly one of the greatest to do it. Now, let's take a peek at our final team standings. Penn State wins their 10th NCAA team title, and really by a wide margin. They finished with almost 37 more points than the second place team, which was Michigan. Michigan was followed by Iowa, Arizona State, and Nebraska round out the top five. Something of note, since taking over as coach in 2009, Cale Sanderson has led Penn State to nine national titles. He is every bit as great in the wrestling world as Nick Saban is as a coach in football. Uh, so, I mean, if you're Penn State, you really couldn't possibly ask for anything better than what Cale Sanderson has delivered for you. But that will wrap up our recap of the NCAA Wrestling Championship Tournament. Pretty, pretty neat, pretty fun. A couple of local boys really making good out there in Detroit, and we salute them and thank them for all their hard work and congratulate them. And with all that being said... You have been watching Red on Q College Sports. I am your host, Tyson Quiller. Please remember to like, subscribe, share this content with anyone you think might be interested, and we will get at you next time.